Thanks for tuning in to Healthy Planet One, where we discuss healthy living from experts in each of their fields. This is your host, Patricia Starr. And your co-host, Kimberly Knox. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Healthy Planet One. Today, we are going to be talking about providing health care of the future. And we are so really happy to have Dr. Max McLeod with us, who is a, um, a doctor of osteopathic medicine naturopath physician and a nutrition and holistic um, health science PhD who I've known for several years and I've known the quality of work that he produces is really outstanding. I know he's passionate about helping people overcome their health challenges and achieve their health performance and goals in a really powerful way. Welcome today, Max, to our show. Thank you. So I know that you are also um, the founder of ART, which is, um, you want to tell us a little bit about that? That'd be great. And also about your body symphony and the incredible work that you do around providing products for people. Sure. ARTC or ART uh, stands for Age Reversal Technology Center. And uh, it was kind of a, a something I wanted to do for many, many years. Uh, I um, have another company called Body Symphony where we develop uh, develop nutritional products and some, some really amazing stuff. And in the new expanded facility, I also had the opportunity to uh, have some, um, let's say, uh, clinical space. And that's uh, where I wanted to uh, manifest this concept I had many years ago for an age reversal technology center where I pulled together some of the the most amazing health-related technologies that I've come across over the last 40-plus years of practice, yet never seem to make it to, of course, the conventional medical field or, or didn't fit the, uh, the health club model or, or other models. So uh, they, they, they haven't been available for people. And so that's what RT or Age Reversal Technology Center, is about. It's a place where people can... Um, access and utilize those technologies yes and you're working with some really um things that i know that oftentimes in the medical world the mainstream medical world they go well yeah you've got neuropathy you'll probably have it the rest of life there's nothing we can do and so you have discovered some interesting things that actually can help people but before we go there can let's hear a little bit about your product um that you have created because i know you spent several years with Body Symphony, your other company, and what do you provide there for people? Because I think that's an important ingredient for people to know about. Sure. Well, um, you know, having practiced for many years, and, and of course in the integrative and, and uh, alternative medical field, you have to do a lot of work with nutrition because it's, it's crucial to people's ability to heal and, and, uh, and just be healthy. So I was a bit disappointed with some of the things that were available out there. So uh, several years ago, I had an opportunity to start um, producing a, a couple of things that I had been you know, working on and using with, with patients for years. And the foundation one was a product called Superfood Mix, but now we call it Complete Meal Mix. And it's a blend of uh, about 30 different superfoods, uh, half of which are what I call everyday superfoods and half of which are the concentrates. Anyway, it's a very versatile um, mix that can be used to make, um, you know, smoothies or shakes, but also cookies, cupcakes, muffins, pancakes, uh, burgers. So it's very, very versatile. High protein, high fiber, high in healthy fats, um, low carbohydrate. Uh, so it's a, it's a unique product. And the foundation of that product is pumpkin seed protein. Now, we start when I started this out 15 plus years ago. It was we used whey protein because at the time that we believed that was the best you know protein source you could use. Well, over the years, I modified it and found different things and had different versions of you know vegan as as well as uh, you know the, the whey protein based. And then about eight or nine years ago, I stumbled on pumpkin seed protein and just fell in love with it. A after about six months of using it, I eliminated all the other choices and we focus on it and. We actually make our own pumpkin seed protein in-house. We press the seeds uh, to get most of the oil out using a hydraulic 
um, you know, room temperature process versus uh, an expeller press that most companies will use, although there are only a few that make it. And then we take the leftover cake, grind it up, and use it to make our protein powder. So it's what's interesting about that is that it's the only real food protein powder there is. Everything else, including pea and whey and rice and other proteins, go through 12 to 14 plus major processing steps. With pumpkin seeds, since they're already naturally high in protein and many other vital nutrients, all we have to do is press out most of the oil and then grind up the cake. So it's as close to the whole food as you can possibly get, um, but concentrated uh, up to about 70% protein in the powder with other vitamins and minerals and, and vital nutrients. So, so that's, that's a huge departure than what you normally find in the grocery stores for protein powder, right? Oh, completely. And, and it's, it's because all manufacturers have to rely on what ingredients are available to them. And pumpkin seed protein is, is one that's relatively recent. And there are very few, um, in fact, we've only found a couple in the U.S. that actually will manufacture it. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a difficult process, uh, which we found out the hard way. Uh, uh, had to learn how to do it ourselves because the, uh, the sources were uh, kind of drying up and, and, you know, the prices were they, more than quadrupled from when we started using it. So we mm -hmm. had to figure out how to do it ourselves, and, and it took some time and effort. And it's, it's a bit challenging, but <clears throat> it's, it's simple. It's just hard. So the point is that it's a real food. And it is one that's, you know, relatively hypoallergenic. Very few people have sensitivities to pumpkin seeds. Um, it's, it's balanced and complete in terms of amino acid profile. It's got a ton of additional vitamins, minerals, and phytonutrients that also occur naturally in pumpkin seeds. So it's got so many benefits, it's, it's, it's mind-boggling. And one of the most important benefits is that it tastes good. It's actually the best-tasting protein powder there is all by itself. And of course, then we, we do it in different flavor versions for people as well. So that's the foundation of our product line. We use that to make a number of different products. We use the oil to make a number of other products. And then we uh, have added a, a, a smattering of different uh, superfood and specialty products like Rugal's iodine, uh, a liposomal vitamin C, um, you know, and, and uh, carbon 60, which is a whole another fascinating story. Oh, my goodness, a tremendous amount of research. And just for our listeners, I know you um, they can find uh, this protein mix on on the web, I believe, right? Yes, the uh, the website for the the products is mybodysymphony.com. And there there there's three different kinds. I know I use the peak performance, and in that you've added, a lot of other really good nutrients that are beneficial for the body and to allow for peak performance as well. Yes, yes. I'll give you a real quick story on that. So everyone is familiar with, with meat, obviously, and, and there are some actual nutritional benefits of meat um, aside from, you know, the in, uh, problems with environmentally and ethically and then some of the other issues with, with how the animals are raised and and uh, making it not the healthiest thing to consume. However, meat itself is particularly healthy if, you know, it's raised properly. Again, not that I choose to use it. However, there was a whole cult or meat cult that existed back in, in Roman times and actually going back to the ancient Greeks. Uh, there was a period where the top Greek Olympic athletes uh, which was, you know, to them bigger than all of our professional sports combined, um, were on exclusive meat diets for a couple of hundred years. And obviously they were very bright people, so they didn't do this, you know, based upon a fad. Uh, so we, we now know, though, there are a number of specific nutrients that occur only in red meat and nowhere else. So what I did was I took those nutrients in, in, in um, you know, vegan, from vegan sources, basically, and concentrated them and added them to pumpkin seed protein to make peak performance. So basically, it's a, it's a plant-based protein, vegan protein, that's more balanced and complete than meat. Cool. So that vegans can, uh, can feel safe in util utilizing this product, right? 
Absolutely. Wow. Okay. So that's just one aspect, and there's so much to cover with you. I'm like, okay, what else? What else can we talk about? So let's talk about um, this unique. What What is your unique approach to helping people in a healthy way? Obviously. Okay. Uh, let me see. I guess to me, it, it all starts with the with looking at the big picture, the whole picture, and of course that's the foundation of holistic philosophy and, and approaches. And there's a great quote from John Ruskin that sums it up nicely. And it goes something like this. Uh, Not only is there but one way of doing things rightly, but there is only one way of seeing them. And that is seeing the whole of them. So, you know, when you really think about it and understand many of the problems that we have on the planet are a result of people not seeing the big picture, not looking at the whole situation. You know, the classic um, uh, parable about the, you know, the the four or five people examining an elephant. You know, one's got the trunk, one's got the the foot, one's got the tail. And so they're giving completely different perspectives on what they're they're examining because their view and experience is so limited. So that's the foundation of what I do is I look at things as holistically as possible. And that was incorporated in, in my training. The next, I guess, is that I love to solve problems, people's health problems in particular. And I believe that in addition to a holistic perspective, you have to assess problems with an open mind. So most of the time, people allow themselves to jump to conclusions based on biased beliefs, and that prevents them from being objective. So the next thing, I guess, in my unique approach, I focus on understanding the underlying physiology and the potential mechanisms that led to the problem help devise a plan to correct it. And that's where I spent so much time in school because, you know, I, originally I was, uh, you know, a self-trained nutrition fitness person. And then I went and got my naturopathic degree and learned a tremendous amount more and then still felt that I was some holes in my education. So I went back to do a, more of a conventional osteopathic medical training program and, and round it out. Because if I can't understand it, how can I possibly you know, devise a program or plan to correct it. So it's, it's again, so it's by looking at the whole picture and then understanding as much as we're able to understand what the problem, the physiology of the problem is. And then finally, I utilize an approach that combines the best of what's available based on, on previous results, the data, logic, and critical thinking. In other words, I evaluate and find solutions based on what makes sense and most importantly, will cause no harm. Wow. So you spend more than five minutes with your client, I take it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that, that, that's from when I, when I was a naturopath on through the, as, as, as an osteopath and, and, you know, everywhere in between. That was one of the most important things. And people don't realize that a diagnosis is only as good as the information you have available. Mm. And if you get to conclusions you you can never understand what's going on with that person. So you have to listen. You have to do a proper history and figure out what are the key pieces. So here's a quick little story. When I was going through my medical training, of course, you, you do um, clinical rotations in different specialties, you know, OB-GYN, family practice, you, have, you know, cardiology. <clears throat> and every, every you know, this, they, they're usually one to three months each. And so whenever you start out, the first couple of days, you think that that doctor you're working with is a freaking genius. But then after you're there for the month, you realize that, no, they just they just categorize everything into basically eight or 10 different things, period. So no matter what comes in, they're going to categorize it into one of those eight or 10 different things. And then they know a lot of things about those eight or 10 different things. So basically, they make you fit into one of their preconceived categories. But yeah. and it's not that it's, it's not that them they're doing it and it's their 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 fault. It's that's the way they're trained. That's the way medicine is set up. It's a color by the numbers, uh, step by step process based upon a diagnosis, which is when you really understand it, diagnoses are complete fabrications. They are a classification system based in uh, a very limited, uh, erroneous philosophical approach, um, you know, obviously based on 
the foundation of conventional medicine is the germ theory, which is completely disproven. So, so, so that's kind of an idea of, of, of how I do things differently. So I know.